compromise as they were in the beginning. We cannot compromise, and as you might see, I have the Catechism here, many, many pages, a very large book, but I do have this book, which I would call the Book of Books, the only book on earth that has the handwriting of God, has the confirmation of God. In the Old Testament, all the promises were made in the New they come to fulfillment. In these books, men have written what they thought. In this book, God's thoughts are expressed. As I express my thoughts by my words, God expressed His thoughts by His word. And therefore, a true believer will only take his stand for and in God's Word. But here is maybe a lesson we all need to learn. In Matthew chapter 4, the enemy came several times to our Lord, saying, If thou be the Son of God, then speak to these stones to become bread. If thou art the Son of God, then speak. If thou art the Son of God, then speak. Beloved, Satan comes with the word, but he always takes it out of context. He displaces it, he misinterprets it, he misapplies it. And therefore, we have to watch. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of God. Not everyone in whose mouth is the word of God is saying the truth. It must be the original word of God, not just a statement here and a statement there. To give you an example so you know what I mean, beloved brothers and sisters, dear friends, going to the Great Commission. And we have to start with the ABC. You know, I love to speak to you directly about the book of Revelation, about the things written therein, which are so important for us to know. And actually, I have written a small book about the 22 chapters of Revelation. It's so important to know the symbols which express something. You know, if you read the first four seals, you see one horse rider, the next, the third, and the fourth, but they all represent something. And then in the fifth seal, you don't see any horse rider anymore. Four is enough. But these four do have a significance. Then you read about all the other things in the different chapters of the Revelation. But beloved, we must start right. We must come to the Lord, have our own relationship with Him, our fellowship. We must be reconciled with God. We must know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Repentance must come upon us, which only comes by the conviction of the Holy Spirit. When God's Word is being preached, then the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. First, of unbelief. Second, of judgment. Third, of righteousness. You can read it, especially in the chapters of John, chapter 14 and 16, even to the extent that when the Holy Spirit has come, He will lead us into all the truths. He will even show the future things unto us. Beloved, it's so important, but we must start right. We must have personal access to God and to His Word. And then only 
the mysteries found in the scriptures will be revealed unto us. As we said many times, the misunderstandings prevail. Like if you read Luke 16, 16, the law and the prophets were unto John. From that time, the kingdom of God is being preached. In one place, you read Christ is the end of the law. And then in Romans 7, you read that the law is spiritual for him who understands the significance thereof. In my country, there can be as many laws as you wish. I never came to know a single law because I live in grace. I keep the laws and therefore I don't need to appear in court. The law of my country is never applied to me because I live not over the law, but in the law, but not because something makes me to do it. Voluntarily, I just live according to the rules and regulations. But when it comes to the spiritual part, then we all live in transgressions. We all have broken the commandments. And the law is given to convict us of our transpasses. The law is given to take us to judgment. And grace is coming or has come to take us out of the prison. The law has put us into prison because we were guilty. And grace has taken us out of prison. We have to understand these things. So if the apostle says the law is spiritual, then we understand what it means. It, it's not do this or do that, but be convinced of the transgressions. Be convinced that we're cut off from God. We're separated from God. We transgressed in many, many ways. And we need God's grace. We need salvation. We need eternal life, not a religion. So everything, even law, has its place. Grace has its place. The Gospels have their place. The book of Acts has its place. The epistles have their place. Everything is divinely ordered in the Holy Scriptures, or better to say, is in a divine order. So in the four Gospels, we find the description about our Lord and Savior right from His birth to His ascension. In the book of Acts, we have the establishing of the New Testament church by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We have the first sermon preached in Acts chapter 2. And we have there where baptism is being administered. We have there where repentance is being preached. Everything is right in the first sermon. So everyone preaching today must compare whether we do teach what the apostles taught, whether we baptize in the name of Jesus Christ after people have received the remission of sins. Water baptism does not remit sins. The remission of sins should be preached in the name of Jesus Christ. You can check it. Luke chapter 24, verse 47. There our Lord says that remission of sins should be preached to all nations in my name. There you have it. First, the remission of sins is being preached by the gospel, then those who believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, they receive the forgiveness of their sins according to what our Lord said. And Peter could very clearly speak and say, those who believe your sins are forgiven. And he had to say, if you don't believe your sins cannot be forgiven because Jesus Christ is the object of our belief. Only in Christ, God met with us 
and only in Christ we can meet with God. And therefore, God was in Christ, reconciling the world with himself. And the blood was shed, the blood of the new covenant.